Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today in the podcast, I am interviewing Paul Larson. Paul and I have the best conversation. We are talking all about imposter syndrome, about integrating it into you instead of rejecting it, which is what most people want to do. We talk about success. We talk about self love. We talk about self inspiration, self awareness, emotional intelligence. This is a wonderful episode, and I cannot wait for you to meet Paul jump on in. My name is Katie Allen and this is Self Love Ignited. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today on the podcast, I have the pleasure of interviewing Paul Larson. Paul, you and I first connected months ago and it we are finally here. We are finally recording. I'm really, really excited to have you here. Why don't you take a moment and introduce yourself to everybody? Oh, Kitty. Hi. It's like <laughs> wonderful. My heart is just beating with, with vibrancy. It's so exciting to be here. And you're right. We, we met months ago. It was a wonderful connection. Um, so it's great to, to, to be engaged with you today. Um, I can say it in like one piece of paper right here, right? Hello, <laughs> I'm human. Um, I love this. This comes from a, 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 I found it online. I think Liz and Molly, they're a, a wonderful group of folks that, that create these little vignettes that just kind of touch where our heart is or where our mind is or where our gut is. So that's me, I'm human. I can be happy, I can be sad, I can be angry, frustrated, jealous, um, I can be envious, I can compare, I can judge, I can be motivated, I can be inspired. I'm all those things. First and foremost then, as a human though, what I love to do is serve others. And I have in my life tried to kind of figure out how to do that. I've done it with hamburgers, I've done it with a shoe store, I, I've, I've done it as human resources. So I've had lots of roles where I've served others until I kind of found the path um, to really, really align with what I'm supposed to be doing. And so for probably the last 11, 12 years, I am uh, a coach and I, I serve others by helping others through the mosaic that is our life, through the hybrid, through, through the pathways, that, that the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, because I've had all of those and continue to do. And I serve others through that. So as a coach, I find myself working with people, um, entrepreneurs, um, corporate, um, people just say, hey, I need some help with X, Y, Z. And am I the right coach for that or the right person to help you? So I bring that, 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 that human tag, that human name tag to everything that I do. Um, and I just love it. And, and I just have a, uh, it, it, it is, it's so integrated into what I do from both my mind and my heart that I don't see myself ever doing anything else, nor do I see a timeline where it ends, where some people have you know, conventional jobs and so forth. Yeah. I'm just gonna continue to do this because it just fulfills me and it just replenishes me on a daily basis. So how's that for an introduction? That either says a lot or for some people, it might say, well, I don't understand. What does he still, what does he do? <laughs> no, that's perfect. I mean, that's so well said, right? Like we are, we are human and like being human first and foremost. Yes, we are, you know, business owners and partners and siblings and like what, whatever. We all have all of these labels, but we're all just humans, like having a very messy up and down experience. And if we can all just exactly. be that first. Can you imagine if we were all just that first, if all the other well, stuff just fell away? You said a key word, which was messy. Yeah. So kind of like, you know, the painting behind me, it's beautiful, it's colorful, it's vibrant, but it can be messy, right? It's all these things meshed together and people are going to see different things as they look at it. But that's what life is. It's, it's, it can be messy, but in such a colorful, wonderful way. And if it's not that way, how do we find a way through that? Or how do we see through that, right? In, in, in terms of that. So yeah, I just, we're here for such a very, very short time. It's yeah. like a blink of an eye. And even though we may not think that sometimes, I wanna, I wanna experience what I can from that and, and learn what I can from that and serve myself as well besides serving others. So yeah. I love messy. It's all about <laughs> being in that 
you know, we're so, uh, you know, we're so focused on getting there. Yeah. W- whatever there is, yeah. I'm going to get there. I'm going to set a goal. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there next week. I'm going to get there next year. I'm going to get a new job next month. I'm going to retire in two months. There's always a getting there. Yeah. And we have that get there-itis, which is I'm just going to drive and get there that we're going to fly over or bridge over the journey. And yeah. that to me, that gap from where we are currently to where we want to be, that gap is where the learning takes place. Yeah. That gap is where, is where things are revealed to us. That gap can be messy. Mm-hmm. So I've, 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 I've hashtag love the gap, hashtag mind the gap, hashtag live in the gap, because to me, that's where, that's where life occurs. Mm. Yes. I love that. I love that. And um, so let's talk about, let's talk about the gap. Let's talk about your gap, right? So, so this podcast is all about telling the stories of self-love and self-love is a general term, right? You may not identify with self-love. We can talk about that, but it's really about telling the stories of people like you who have come from a place of maybe not liking, not accepting, not loving parts of themselves to really sort of stepping into themselves and learning to love themselves mm-hmm. and, and, and bridging that gap. So Paul, tell us about where you began. Tell us about way back when, tell us about the time when you maybe weren't so connected to yourself, weren't so accepted. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, there's probably, if, when you look at, when you look at your lifeline up to current day, I can probably identify multiple points in my life, multiple anchors in my life, multiple off ramps in my life where I got disconnected from the highway that is taking me through the gap and led myself down roads that, that, you know, through decisions that just sort of like made me even more misaligned, so to speak. So all of that though, all of that kind of came into kind of the perfect storm, shall we say in 2009. Um, And like many things in life, when a rite of passage happens to us, if we are self-accepting, if we are in a receiving mode, we can learn a tremendous amount. So 2009, I was in a wonderful, wonderful job um, on paper, but the job for me was completely, I wasn't engaged at all. It was a wonderful company, wonderful people, wonderful product, but where I was in my life was completely misaligned. Everyone looked at it you know, you know, from, from like watching me on TV, you know, you know, theoretically and say, oh my gosh, what a wonderful job he's got. What a wonderful TV show he's got. He is so lucky. He is because it looked like I was playing out just in a wonderful sitcom when I was in like a really terrible soap opera. It was just completely misaligned. And then a rite of passage happened. My father passed away. And he had had a wonderful, wonderful life. And his passing, his transition was, was, was very peaceful and the ending was very beautiful. And at his memorial service or where we're celebrating who he was, people were, people were coming in and, and, and talking about what a wonderful, wonderful um, individual he was and what he meant in their lives. Now, by the way, when, when you have a celebration of life, that's what you want people to say about you. By anyway, you know, that's, that's what you want to happen. But I wasn't surprised. He was a wonderful guy. He was a wonderful dad. He was a wonderful parent. But I sat there and then all of a sudden it was like, it, Katie, it was like a flash of lightning. And that because I was in receiving mode and I sat there and go, holy moly, yeah. what are they going to say about me? What are they going to, what are, when, when it's my turn to transition, when it's my turn to say goodbye and people come and, and quote unquote, pay their respects, what are they going to say about me? Yeah. And I was listening. I literally was watching people get up in front and they were taking a microphone and talking about him and I didn't really hear them anymore. <laughs> I was just listening to like, what are they going to say about me? <laughs> and the stuff that was going through my head was, was, oh, Paul is a a wonderful HR leader. He helped me terminate 400 people. Paul helped me develop compensation plans that were wonderful. Paul helped me interview 25 people for a team. I mean, it was all technical of what I was doing because at that time I, I, I was in human resources. And I sat there and I thought, 
I, it was like I, I sat up kind of rigid in, in the in the church. It was in a church in, in, in like those hard, you know, hard pews, you know, and you're sitting there. Yep. And I sat up and I'm like, oh no. And I remember, I remember my sister putting like her arms around me because I think she thought I was like, you know, <laughs> reacting. And I wasn't <laughs> reacting to that. I was reacting, but I didn't have the heart to say anything to her till after. Right. But I remember thinking, oh my word, what you know. I've got to do something. Mm. It was my father's call to action for me. Mm. And later on, when I was telling my sister and I said, I got to tell you, when you, when, when you were, when you wrapped your arms around me, this is what happened. Um, and, and she just laughed. We both had a great laugh, but she says, you know, that was the kick in the butt from dad. She goes, cause you've been talking a little while about you go from corporate gig to corporate gig and they're all wonderful, but are you actually making momentum and traction in your life? And that was the decision point for me to say, I have something to share. Yeah. I have a message to serve. I didn't know quite what that was yet, but I knew it wasn't where I needed, where I was. And I knew I needed to make a decision to do that. And that was, that was that pivot point for me was mm. 2009. That's, and, the, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's powerful. And it usually is like, it's like the birth or a death or something, right? Like that's usually when these things hit us and we don't always know what to do with them. Like you said, you were like, you didn't have an action plan, but it was uh, something needs to happen. Something right. needs to change, right? Something needs to change. I yeah. knew I needed to do something different. So I needed to, I needed to nest with that for a while. I needed to incubate it for a while. And I did, I, I, I sat with it for well, not a long time, just a few months as I thought about kind of plans and I thought about, okay, if I do decide, I'm going to decide. I knew the decision was I needed to go do something. Wasn't quite sure what. So I knew there was going to be a, tran a, a, you know, a transitory process or a transitory period. So I made the decision to leave my current role and to go and, and kind of become, you know, quote unquote, not quite the entrepreneur piece, but more of a consultant in a certain space to give me some freedom away from the corporate ties that I felt I had been burdened with yes. on my own choice, by the way, yeah. not from the, not from the company. And so by doing that, that freed me up kind of as a freelancer, as we call, to be able to really explore all different types of avenues and what I was, and, and being open to receiving information and messages. Now, I just didn't go do this um, on a fly. I made, I made financial plans to it. I made you know, I made, I took all the right steps from a practical perspective or a science perspective. Yeah. And then I let the art speak. I said, okay, I did everything that I'm supposed to do. By the way, when I was doing this, everybody was telling me I was crazy. They were saying, how can you leave such a wonderful company? How can you leave such a wonderful job? How can you leave everybody? Mm -hmm. And, and they were correct because remember they're watching it from the TV. They're like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. No, no, don't open that door. No, 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 don't open that door. You know, it was like, <laughs> they knew, you yeah. know, they, they could see it, but it was like, they weren't, they weren't in, they weren't in the, 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 the television show that was my life. So I, I, I made all those decisions and I went out and, and, and played a variety of different roles from kind of a freelancer. And because I was in kind of a messy um, state, I was in the gap. I was out of my comfort zone. Things started to kind of play in, in terms of like, hey, Paul, how about this or that? And that's where coaching came in. Now, I had been familiar with coaching, but I had never necessarily thought of it as, you know, like, oh, that's what I'm going to go do. Because people think, oh, you know, when people think you open your business or you, you, you already have that all planned, right? No, I was just open to it. And then it became much more apparent to me based on my inspiration, based on my style, and based on what I, what I love to do and what fulfills me and what I accept of myself and which I'm good at and recognize myself, that was the role. And then I made, I made some decisions around, around, um, uh, you know, around becoming a coach and, and hanging my quote unquote shingle out of, of, of doing that. And the yeah. rest then is where I am today. Yeah, to do those kinds of decisions. How did you find the? Um, I want to know about the 
inner stuff? Like, were, was there like self-doubt, inner critic, like during this whole process, was that coming up a lot? Or because you said like you had a plan, you had like a financial plan, did all the inner stuff not get to you so much because you had like a structure? Self-doubt? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I live in self-doubt. <laughs> I live in like, yeah. I, 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 yes, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. All those things came up and the, you know, here's, and here, you brought, you, you bring up something that is so important. We can hide behind plants. Yeah. We can make all our little checklists and we can do all those things. And then we can hide behind that. So I did all the checklists. And I did all the financial planning and all the things that I'm supposed to do. But the self-doubt lives in the art. It doesn't necessarily live in the science. It lives in the art. So when I actually went out to do it, I had imposter syndrome all over the place. And, and, and you know, imposter syndrome is all about thinking that you're a fake, thinking that you're a fraud, um, thinking that you're pulling one over on people and that you're going to be found out. Hence, imposter, right? right. Um, it's not about confidence. People think, oh, it's just, it's lack of confidence. Not really. You can be a very, I was a very confident imposter, you know, because I can, I can, I can display my wares in such a way that people are like, oh, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Inside, I'm like, just, I'm like, I'm like, a, 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 like you were saying, a mess of doubt. I, I yeah. live on, on Doubt Street in Doubtville. So, <laughs> so what I needed to do is lean into that. Yeah. Because here's where it got a little, um, here's what became apparent to me. When we have the self-doubt and we have imposter syndrome and we have all of those things, I had invested so much in, in, in going out on my own and, and really making that decision. And because it was anchored to a rite of passage, you know, my father's transition, I just felt there was, there was, my full heart was in it. It wasn't just the decision I made on Tuesday and I did it on Thursday, right? So I said to myself, okay, I've got to figure some of this out. How am I going to integrate this? And the word integration came to me versus overcome. So much of what we do in today's world is when, when, you, when you search anything, it's like, how do I overcome self-doubt? How do I overcome imposter syndrome? Yeah. Well, it was already hard enough to go on my own. It was already hard enough to start my business. Mm -hmm. It was already hard enough to listen to the naysayers that were, that were all over the place, you know, telling me what I was doing was nuts. I said, I can't overcome anything. It's too hard. I'm already fatigued on this. Yeah. I've got to figure out a way to make it work for me. Mm -hmm. So I did some research on it. I dove, I dove into the empirical data and, and, um, I really looked to see, you know, what, what was this whole thing about imposter syndrome, which I was familiar with because I had, I, I you know, I was born with it basically, <laughs> but I, but I really kind of wanted to realize it in a very yeah. practical terms. Yeah. And one of the pieces of data that jumped out at me was up to 80 or 90% of successful highlight, successful highlight successful people <laughs> have identified having imposter syndrome through their life or at least once in their life. And when I read that, and I didn't even need to go behind that data, but I did. But when I read that, just that topical piece, I was like, oh, <laughs> because I was in good company. Yeah. I was in the company of successful professionals. This wasn't a performance issue. This wasn't a performance gap. This was like a highlight that you are doing something out of your zone. You are doing something good for yourself. You are, you are evolving. Yeah. And then when I went in and read who had admitted it, you know, everybody from Oprah to Maya Angelou to Tom Hanks to Howard Schultz from Starbucks, all these people in the public domain yeah. have admitted it. I'm like, oh my gosh, there we go. <laughs> and so I decided at that point right there that I was going to take the trajectory of making it work for me mm. and thriving with it and not trying to necessarily overcome it, but really understand it more and know that when that happens to me or when that imposter voice begins to speak, mm -hmm. it's a voice of recognition. It's a voice of validation. It's a voice of gratitude. 
And that's what I've been doing. And wow. it's been ever since then, it's been a self-love journey because I accepted myself on that versus trying to change myself or get rid of something that is a part of me. Yeah. I accepted it. Yeah. And that like, there's so many powerful things in what you just said. I mean, everything from understanding that what do you do is 80%, something like 80 to 90% of like successful people, you know, quote unquote, successful people have this. This is not something, there's nothing wrong with you. You are not strange or unique because you have this. And all of those successful people, they didn't get rid of it, right? They embraced it. They took it in and used it to their advantage, which is exactly, exactly. What it sounds like what you've done, right? So like right. this, and I think so many people, I mean, I see this with people all the time. I'm sure you probably do as well, where people will come and say, I have this part of me, let's imposter syndrome. I have this part of me and I don't like it. And I want to get rid of it. I want this voice in my head to stop talking. I want to take this part out and replace it with something else. But that in and of itself is a rejection of part of you. And as long as you are rejecting part of you, you're not whole. You're not going to be working together. You're always going to be fragmented, right? Yeah. You 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 nailed it. Yeah. It's it's we spend we can spend so much time in today's society rejecting so much of ourselves, and we can listen to people that reject us as well and tell us what to do, or we've been rejected, and even that word, right? (laughs) Um, and and the other word that, that comes with that is the word fit. We're all looking, I, w- I was talking to a client today and we were talking about fit, especially when people are looking in for relationships mm-hmm. or they're going out and interviewing. Are you a fit? And I can't stand that word because the word fit means that you have to fit in. It's like a, um, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And you're that last piece that's going to be in it. Oh, the puzzle's done. (laughs) Paul is here. Look, we're complete. And guess what? If Paul grows or Paul changes or Paul evolves, that puzzle piece doesn't fit anymore. (gasps) And then what happens? There's a gap. Right. And that's because of Paul. Look at Paul. So I have chosen, and this is another piece that, 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 that I'm sure you work with too. I've chosen to reframe things in my life, the, yeah. the, 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 the verbiage that we use. Uh, so instead of fit, I look at integration. Mm-hmm. How do I integrate? How do I blend? So because when, you, when you're blending and you're integrating, it's, you're creating like a mosaic, yeah. which can then change and evolve. It's not like a set finite puzzle that then is done and those pieces can never, ever change. Right. So to your point, and, and if you think about rejection, as you said, rejection is because normally so, something doesn't fit, right? Something doesn't fit within me. I've learned long, uh, I learned through my trials and tribulations in my life, which have been just incredible learnings. Um, I got sober 31 years ago because I couldn't find a way that that alcohol was going to integrate in my life. Right. So, but instead of saying, I don't like this, this has got to get out. I've got to move this. I figured out a way, like, how am I going to integrate sobriety into my life? And what is that going to provide to me that will replenish alcohol when it leaves? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, through, through, through the, through the journey of sobriety, you know, clarity a vision, um, just incredible sort of like incredible outcomes I can have. Mm -hmm. incredible sort of nesting with myself and more importantly you know that acceptance of me as a sober being and that was 31 years ago those learnings are still continuing to this day yeah so it's like anything katie the 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 work that you do um and and that self-acceptance and the self-love and and all of that it is so imperative for people and so critical because there's so much rejection in today's world and it, it, that we need to figure out a way, how can you integrate into a new being, mm. but without rejecting parts of who you are already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is such a great conversation. I want to say uh, it doesn't matter whether it was one year, one day or 31 years ago. Congratulations on your Thank sobriety. You. Um, Thank you. That, that is, uh, 
I, I know that that's, that that's not a small feat, right? That that's a big deal. And I'm, and I'm sure that that um, probably impacts a lot of what you do because it's impacted who you are as a person, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I want to talk about that integration piece. So, you know, and we'll go, we'll go back to, um, feeling like a fraud, imposter syndrome. And you realized this, you saw that you had it, you saw that all these other successful people had it. And you said, instead of rejecting this, let's, let's use it. Let's see how we can use it. How did you do that? I think that's the question. <laughs> Everybody listening is like, okay, Paul, that's great. How do I do that? How, how did, like, how did, and I'm, I'm sure it's, it's an ongoing thing, right? Like there's no one answer, but what did that look like at the beginning? How did you begin that integration process? You know, what's the first step that everyone says that we have to do to, to really like grow? The first step is self-awareness, right? It's, it's, it's the hallmark of emotional intelligence. Our ego, our IQ doesn't necessarily like us to be aware because it wants, it wants to drive everything. So, so I stepped into that self-awareness, which, you know, I had always kind of thought I was self-aware enough um, in, to some degree. And, and I, I thought I, I anchored myself in that. So I thought, okay, the first step I'm going to do here is when that, when that imposter feeling comes up and that, that first of all, it's the thought and then it's the feeling. So the thought always occurs first. Mm -hmm. What's my initial reaction? Well, my initial reaction is to subdue it. My initial reaction is to hide it. My initial reaction is to run from it. You know, kind of what, you know, all the, all the, all the natural reactions we would have with a feeling that's telling us we are subordinate to ourselves, right? And I said, okay, that's the first self-awareness is I'm not gonna do that anymore. I don't know what I'm going to replace that with yet because I said, I, I need to experience it to, to understand it. And I didn't wanna to get too solution oriented because that's the get there-itis. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna acknowledge that feeling and understand it. So I did an imposter diary. And the imposter diary was, was nothing more than through the course of like a day or a few days, I just jotted down whenever I felt like a fake or fraud, whenever mm -hmm. that feeling came up. Mm -hmm. Some days it was one or two times, some days it was 20 or 30 times. Yeah. And I would just quickly jot down like what the scenario was that gave me a theme to look at. And through the course of all of this, and of course, I'm looking at, I'm telling you this now, looking back on it. Yeah. But at the time, I was, I was looking at it, it was like, wow, when I was looking through it, it was like, you know, my little diary, I'm like, wow, this is, you know, we didn't have smartphones then, this is a while, <laughs> or we did, but they weren't that smart. But I was like, going through everything. And I realized, just as we had said, it was when I was doing something new. It was when I was doing something maybe I hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. It was when I was having a conversation with someone that I thought was you know, much smarter than me. Um, it was when I was perhaps feeling intimidated by a group of people, any of those things, when I looked at that. But every single, every single entry in that diary, there wasn't anything that I was doing that was wrong. Yeah. There wasn't anything I was doing that was sending me into a backward spin, so to speak. All of it was forward thinking. All of it was growth. But because it was so new, because I was stepping into this gap, because I was stepping into kind of an unknown, um, 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 you know, an unknown chasm of, of, of whatever, it, 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 it brought up all those voices, that imposter voice. And once I saw that, it was like, there's nothing here to be afraid of. Yeah. It was like, it was like, it, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like being scared of something. And that, that's another, that's another, that's another um, huge feeling is fear. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of this was embedded in fear, right? And when I looked at the thing, I was like, it was almost like ludicrous. I was like, really? <laughs> this? What? You know, like, you know, like I, I was like, what? You know, and I, yeah. I, I made a little fun of myself because that helped to, you know, it helped the frivolity. But I realized like, oh, this is, I can lean into this at any point. And so when, so what I decided to do from that was when I heard my imposter voice, it was going to be a voice, a trophy voice. It was going to be a voice of, of giving me a first, first place medal. It was going to be a voice that I recognized as self-acceptance and thus self-compassion. Mm -hmm. It was not going to be a voice that had fear. 
It was not going to be a voice that rejected me. It was not going to be a voice that was telling me that I was stupid or dumb or not good enough. Now, that was what the first thing came out, right? Oh, you're a fake. Oh, it's like, and then I started to smile. And I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. <laughs> I was with a group of people and I was in a restaurant and we were having a dinner and it was just a collection of, of different kind of uh, colleagues and speakers and, and, and so forth. And these people were, were incredibly like nested in who they were and they were experts and everything. And I was going to be speaking at this conference with them. And I remember sitting down at the table was all round. And so there's like eight or nine people. And I remember looking and thinking, what am I doing here? Oh my God, <laughs> you are such a fake. They're going to pull you off the stage because you're with all these like superstars, right? right. You know, in, 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 in this particular world. Mm -hmm. And I just started laughing. I started laughing at the table. I was just like, I could just start laughing. And two people said, what are you laughing about? And I told them, I told them, I, 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 because they asked me right at the point where I was actually laughing and I was actually kind of just in, in that moment, I don't know if I necessarily, if, I, if my ego had come in, if I would have actually told them, right. but I just told them and they all started laughing. They go, a lot of us are having the same feeling. And that was it right there. There, mm -hmm. there was validation from people that I'd read about, you know, right. but here it was, I was having this feeling. I was laughing about it because it was like, oh, here it is. And I'm recognizing it. And we had a good laugh and they're like, oh, they go, Paul, we have this all the time. Every time, a lot of times, every time we step on stage, every time we're with every, they go, it's just, and you, you get to a point where you accept it and it becomes part of, it becomes integrated into who you are. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to do the work around. And again, when I say work, it, 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 I, I, I make it sort of inspirational work. Um, you have to do the work around the awareness yeah. of understanding that those voices are there. And, the, and here's the other piece. And probably one of the most important pieces is the voice is there to help you. Yeah. Even though it sounds ridiculous, you're a fake, you're a fraud, but it's actually, it, it's trying to protect you from doing something stupid right? It thinks, it thinks you can't be in this group of people. Yeah. Yes, you can, but it's, it doesn't know that yeah. it, it, it resides in a different neighborhood. So it doesn't understand where you're living. So it's just trying to protect you. So I just thank it. I, I show gratitude towards it. I show love towards it. And then I move on and continue on. I love that. I love that so much. And that's so powerful for anybody who's listening to this, who is experiencing this, who is feeling like a fraud, who feels like they're an imposter. That right there, like if you take away nothing else, that right there, right? The awareness of it. And then the understanding that that voice, it actually does want something good for you, right? Absolutely. Like it, it, it has really great intentions. It's just right. not so great at carrying them out. It doesn't understand the whole picture. Yeah, See it? It, it doesn't, it, it hasn't gotten the education, the self-awareness that you have. Right. And so, but it's trying in its own way to, to protect you. Mm. And so yeah. it's record, you just recognize that and you show empathy towards it. Yeah. Because again, that's part of emotional intelligence. The imposter voice, your imposter body, your imposter being doesn't have EQ. It doesn't <laughs> practice EQ. Right. And, and it's just like any, it's like people we run into in real life who don't have a lot of EQ, mm -hmm. you know, that's where they come from. And I just meet people like that and do the best that I can um, to recognize them, validate them, show grace for them mm -hmm. and understand where they're coming from. Well, my imposter, my imposter being is no different than that. Yeah. It just yeah. happens to be residing in me. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this work. So I want to ask first off, do you identify this journey as one of self-love, self-acceptance? Like what, if you, if you had to label it and I'm, I'm not all about labels, like I don't really like labels, but I like asking this question because I find it very intriguing how people can get attached to words. Is there something that feels most true to you? Self-acceptance, self-love, self-appreciation? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it, it, I, I agree with you on the labels. Um, uh, and, and, but I, but I also love to be able to, to think about like, it, it has been a journey of self-love. Mm -hmm. It has been a journey of self-acceptance. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also been a journey of self-inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I look for inspired, to take inspired action in all that I do. Yeah. 
um, I, I, I look for ways that I look for, for, for things that are going to really inspire me, which can also be in, when, when you're in the gap, it can be messy. It can be, it can be scary, but they're going to inspire me versus the forced action. I have to do this. I should do this. I need to do this. Those are all, that's all forced action. So I, I love to reframe to say, I get to do this. I choose to do this. Yeah. Um, so with that, when I find inspiration in, in, in the actions I take and, and sort of the joy that I, that I get to be right each day, yeah. the self-love, the self-acceptance is a natural pathway then for me. And if I, and if I ever feel misaligned and I do, I mean, hello, right? I am human <laughs> yeah. and I mean this, but you know, I, you know, I feel stressed some days. I feel frustrated. Sure. Then I re I recognize that though. Yeah. And I don't swirl in it for too long yeah. before I figure out, okay, I'm misaligned right now. I'm choosing thoughts that are not going to necessarily be good for me. Let's figure out what I need to finesse. Let's figure out what I need to reframe. And that, that to me is really self-acceptance, self-love and self-inspiration. It's kind of the trifecta mm -hmm. to really kind of anchor yourself in, in, in who you are and what you can bring to yourself. Mm. You know, I, you and I are in, are in, are in such a, 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 a blessed sort of like um, capacity to serve others. Yeah. But we really need to serve ourselves first. And that's not being selfish. Because if we don't serve ourselves with the replenishment, the acceptance, the love, and the inspiration, we can't, we, we won't have that capacity and availability and approachability to serve others. Yeah. And so that to me is very, very important. That took a little while for me too, mm. because I, I was all about people pleasing. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, I'll do that. You know? Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> and, 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 you know, by, by pleasing people and trying to please others, it's all about like likability and all those things. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's, it's really not about that. Right. It really is building up your reservoir of your own acceptance, your own love and your own compassion for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you are people pleasing, I, I, I laughed when you said that because I'm like, that sounds very, very familiar. Yes, I spent years doing that. When you are people pleasing, you are chasing, right? You are chasing them and like, I'll put everything in order so that you're happy. Whereas when you are working with yourself, you organically, I find this and I'm sure you do too, like you become magnetic, right? You attract people and you don't have to exactly. do things to make other people happy. And, and you end up creating these really beautiful um, relationships, not just, you know, romantic, but even, you know, professional relationships and friendships where it's mutually beneficial and everybody's happy to be there. But that starts with you. That starts within. Every, you, every you nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. It's, yeah. it's, I call it the Zowie factor. It's like Zowie. It's like, <laughs> You have to, you have to, you have to be a Zowie to yourself. Mm. You have to, you have to, you know, it, it, it's not about chasing others. And I love that. And you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Because when you're chasing others, you're chasing that likability, you're chasing yeah. that love, you're chasing that acceptance. And it goes back to what we said earlier. It's because I want to fit. Yeah. It's because I don't want to be rejected. Yeah. So it's like cross all that out. And look for ways that you can integrate your acceptance, your love, and your compassion into who you are mm. and not worry about fit. Because when you, when you begin to replenish yourself with, with all of that, you, everything that you just said happens. Yeah. You open the door for yourself to receive the relationships, the awareness, and all the goodness that, that the universe can, can, can bring you. Yeah. But you've got to get unstuck mm. from doing that. Yeah. And, and that's where, that's where, you know, that's why um, understanding sort of all your voices and understanding how they are, make them work for you and not against you will keep mm. you unstuck on yeah. that momentum. Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. That's great advice. Paul, tell us about how this journey to self-love, self-acceptance, self-inspiration, how has this impacted your journey to entrepreneurship and the work that you do today? Yeah. So that's a great question because 
I, you know, I, I, I hear this a lot. It's kind of like entrepreneurship is hard work and, and, and you, you know, um, I, I, I've heard like, you got to pay your dues and do all that. It's like, eh, yeah, it's, you know, but it, guess what? If it's hard, it's going to be hard. If it's difficult, it's going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. I remember in the corporate world, we used to love to have workshops <laughs> calling, how do you have a difficult conversation? Now think about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> The workshop was how to have a difficult conversation, right? Well, guess what? If you call it a difficult conversation and you put all this energy into a workshop on how to have a difficult conversation, guess what that conversation is probably going to (laughs) manifest into, right? Yeah. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. And so the same holds true. It goes back to what you and I, what we've just talking about it to me. It, it, the, the, the path to entrepreneurship for me has all been integrated. Are, 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 are there times where, again, going back, are there times where I'm, I'm stressed? Absolutely. Are there times where things may not work out based on, what I, based on what I thought or what I planned? Absolutely. But then I look and say, wow, maybe my plan was off a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, maybe there's, there's another way to evolve this. So it really has been, how do I accept myself and how do then I accept myself in the role as an entrepreneur? Mm. And how do I define that for myself without letting all the conventional definitions come into play? I run into this a lot um, working with entrepreneurs, as, as I'm sure you do. And, and they'll, have, they'll have the most finite of plans. And they'll have the, the you know, and because everything is, 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 you know, getting your funding, getting your, you know, get, you know going on the road shows, getting all that stuff so that you have all that and you get the science of it down. Mm-hmm. But then what's missing is the art yeah. of how you put all of that together and how that is, is brought out from your heart. And a lot of times that is missing because they focus so much on the science. And it's so easy to do that because there's so many, there's so many practical guides and checklists for us to follow on that. But really it, it's a blending. It's an integration of both. And, and, you know, it's all about, to me, the heart. It's yeah. all about, like, it's all about leading with the heart because the mind is always on. The mind is always here. But we have to sometimes pay more attention to the heart because the mind is always going to be working. So I, you, you, you want to blend both together. And yeah. that's, that's how I approach entrepreneurship is, is how do I blend all of this into who I am? And you know what? I don't necessarily have like, when you, if, if you were to ask me, okay, it's, 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 you know, where we are today, what are you going to be doing in a year from now or two years from now? I assume it's going to be the same thing, but I'm going to let myself kind of explore yeah. and be curious yeah. and out check and, and, and work through that because I have faith that it will work out whatever I choose to do. Mm, and I love that faith, that word yeah. faith. Because that's where, you know, like you said, you call it the science and the art. And I really love that. You know, there's a lot, people have this strategy and mindset, right? But I mean, essentially it's, it's the same thing as what you're saying, right? Like there's the logical piece and then there's the feeling piece yes. and integrating those two. Um, but the faith, you have yeah. to believe, right? You have to have faith. Yeah. that it's that it's working out in your favor that the art piece is going to work otherwise it's just like throwing spaghetti at a wall and we'll see what happens exactly exactly <laughs> exactly and yeah. you can have the best of science yeah and still not have the faith and you yeah. won't succeed yeah you won't succeed because there'll be nothing behind those numbers there'll be nothing behind that strategy there'll be nothing behind um that 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 guide that checklist you've got to have both yeah. and that to me is a blending And if I ever, you know, and again, I'm human. So do I lose sort of sometimes that, 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 or do I question that faith? Absolutely. Yeah. So then that, that tells me like, okay, wait a minute. Oh, I'm questioning this. I'm having a little hesitation here. I'm having a little resistance that self-aware comes up and that, that allows me to kind of sit with it Mm -hmm. and figure out, is it just trepidation because maybe of what, where we are right now, what I'm going through, or is there something larger? in the scheme that mm-hmm. I need to look at. So again, self-awareness and that ability to incubate that and look at it, not be afraid, not resist, and not, not run away from it. Because when we do that, we just run right back to the ego and the mindset and, or excuse me, the, the, the scarcity and the fear, yeah. and we nest in that, and it's going to come back. 
Yeah. We, we'll feel good at that. It's like pulling, it's like, it's like watching a scary movie or something, <laughs> or pulling a blanket over our head. <laughs> right. That protects us for like, you know, a half hour. But then yeah. we pull, you know, is, is the scary movie or the monster away? You know, we pull the blanket back down. Yeah. It's going to comfort us for, for a little bit, but it's not going to do anything to get it away. And right. that's why I, we, we want to lean into that. And that's, again, that's where the growth happens. That's, that's where the learning happens, mm -hmm. but that's also where the acceptance and the love happen. Yeah. 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 It, it sure is. It sure is. Paul, if somebody is listening to this and they want to get in touch with you, they want to find out about working with you. They want to do all of that. Do you have, um, what's the best place to get in touch with you? Um, they can, uh, my website, uh, Paul okay. N. Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N, good Norwegian last name.com. Okay. Um, and they can, they can check in with me there. They can send me an email if they prefer, paul at paulnlarson.com. I answer everything. So I'm, I'm also on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. So any way that people want to ping me, I welcome any kind of messaging, any kind of any sort of like missives of where people are. So I just love to connect with people as well. Um, if there's an opportunity to work with people, great. But it's not all about that. Yeah. It's all about how we can help and serve each other as well. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Paul, this conversation has been amazing. I just want to say oh, like yeah. on a, on a personal level, me listening to you, I have taken so many, <laughs> I've taken so many like little gold nuggets out of this that I know are like, I can almost feel them like percolating inside of me. Like there's things developing and I, I'm confident that anybody listening to this is going to have the same thing. Like this, you've said so many things in such a unique way, in your unique way. Um, uh, I, so I appreciate that so much coming from you because it, it, you do such a wonderful job serving your audience and serving the world with what you do around self-love, self-acceptance. And so that means a, a lot to me. And just to let you know, those, those things that I've said today have just come up today. Mm. They're based on my experience. But that just shows you, you know, the, the wonderfulness that you allow people in terms of the platform and the framework you give for our thoughts and our thinking to come out. Because our conversation, is, 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 as most folks would know, or maybe they wouldn't know, is not planned. No. And so you allow for that creativity, that curiosity through who you are to come out. And I think that's, that's paramount to um, um, how you serve the audience so wonderfully. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is, uh, yeah, our conversations are not planned. I, I don't know if people actually know that. Uh, this is just a conversation between two people that we like to record. Um, but it, like, that's where the magic is, right? Because it's, we actually, it's sort of interesting. I'm just sort of thinking where you said before, it's like the gap and that's where the magic is. We almost create that gap. We know there's a beginning. We know there's an end. And then we just sort of magically fill in the middle together. Yeah. Absolutely. I've never thought about that before. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's what I love about what the way you set it up is it, it, there isn't necessarily an end point where it's like, okay, what's the solution? Quick, quick, quick. What's yeah. the action? What's that? No. And, and I understand that that also can, can help drive people and, and people do want that, but your, your conversations that you've had and listening to your, your prior episodes, you're in the gap with people. Yeah. And that's what I think is so wonderful in today's world to really incubate in that gap and then for allow people to sort of to sort of just think about, OK, what what what, you know, how do I do this, whatever this might be for them? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And that's what that's I, I think that's what makes it so powerful. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. So, Paul, as we're getting ready to wrap up. I just want to ask, is there anything else that you want to say? Is there anything else in your heart, any last bits of wisdom, anything else that you are inspired to share with us here today? Oh, my word. Um, how do I, <laughs> well, how do I say no to that? Right? Like, no pressure. So, like, no, no pressure at all. Yeah. I, um, you know, here's, here's one thing I would say. So, so when I was coaching one of my clients, and this was a few years ago, um, I kept telling him. Um, and coaches don't usually tell, but, 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 you know, I kept suggesting and, 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 and trying to provide a framework for him to use his voice 
because I, he had such an incredible voice in terms of who he was, his presence, his legacy. He turned around to me and he says, that's who you are, Paul. You are the find your voice coach. So it was an incredible gift back to me, right? Mm -hmm. He gave me back a gift around, around what I do best. So I ask everyone to find your true voice in life, to find your voice of inspiration, to find your voice of heart, to find your voice of courage, whatever that is. I took the voice and I, I ran with it. I, I, I use it in my coaching now because it was such a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. But I just ask people, the world is made up of so many voices. And so many voices nowadays are so loud and so many voices are so angry and so many voices are so demonstrative that we need everyone's unique voice in their own way, no matter, no matter who, whatever, whatever, wherever you come from. And that would be my ask of everyone is to really find and use your voice because the world needs that. Mm, that is a powerful, that's a powerful lesson that you learned. And that is a, yep. uh, it's a powerful challenge, I think, that you've just set out to all of us, right? Find your voice, yep. use your voice. Yeah, I love that. Okay, Paul, we're going to leave it there. I feel like you and I could talk for a really long <laughs> time, but in the interest of keeping this <laughs> a reasonable length, I think we are going to leave it there today. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing your voice with us, sharing your story with us. Um, I'm just, I'm really, really grateful for you coming on today. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. It was a wonderful opportunity. And I, I'm just very heartfelt to, for the opportunity and just to be able to um, meet you, connect with you, converse with you, and just serve your audience in this way. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and from my voice as well. <laughs>